Hi, I'm Clutch, and I would like to ask you, is God science? Does science prove God? Does science disprove God? Does it give us any indication at all? I'm going to try and make the argument that the answer to all of these questions is no. For those of you who don't know, there are three basic propositions in science. Hypotheses, fact, and theory. Hypotheses is the weaker of the three. It's a scientifically sound proposition or guess about the natural world and makes testable predictions to give us a more concrete understanding of things. A fact is a little bit different. And that's not the colloquial fact as in something that's generally held to be true, but more the basic laws and realities of the universe, such as things stick to the earth and tend to fall when you drop them. Now this is where a lot of people get confused. A theory is actually the strongest of the three. A theory is not a speculation. Rather, it is a coherent explanation of all the pertinent facts around us and how they link together to explain how something happens. It ties all the facts together and makes specific testable predictions so that we can prove it wrong or falsify it if it's incorrect. So assuming for a minute that God is science, which of these propositions would it fall under? A theory? As a theory, God is intellectually bankrupt. This is because a theory needs to limit itself. It needs to make specific predictions. But God cannot be limited. He's omnipotent. We could expect any and everything with God. Any fact, anything that we find could be worked into the theory because everything is explainable with omnipotence. In short, the theory of God is not falsifiable and therefore not scientific. Well, what about as a fact? Again, this doesn't work. A fact needs to be directly, empirically observable. Like dropping things and seeing them fall to the earth, we can take things to a laboratory and test them being dropped. We're not inferring it from anything else, we can see it directly. But God is immaterial. He's transcendent. There's no way to probe him with instruments or detect him with a God dart. But what about the stars and the trees and the beauty of nature? Well, that's not God. That's the stars and the trees. And beauty is subjective. What you're doing is inferring God from this. That's not fact. And if it can't be theory, then it must be hypothesis, right? But again, this fails for the exact same reason that the theory fails. The God hypothesis cannot be tested or investigated. Again, God is all-encompassing, so anything that we find, regardless of what it is, can fit it. Remember that something that explains everything, in fact, explains nothing. The explanation of God doesn't tell us how things were made, they could have formed over a long incremental process or ex nihilo in no time at all. And the God explanation doesn't even attempt to tell us this. It just says that this is. And this is the main tenet of my argument. Science explains the how, not God. God would be the writer of the equation, but not part of the equation itself. And that's assuming that there is a, a why, a who, or a writer at all. But that's not a question for science. But again, there's always one last objection. Miracles. Those extraordinary things in nature that just seem supernatural. But a miracle cannot be scientific. It is by definition an exception. So it cannot be tested. They are violations of the natural laws. Laws which we as humans wrote. They're not prescriptive laws, they're descriptive laws. If something violates a natural law, it just means our understanding of physics, biology, or whatever is flawed, incomplete, not perfect. Something which I think all of us can admit. And then we go about and correct our understanding, and the event is natural again. And this has been done throughout history. So what does all this tell us? It's not an argument for or against the existence of God. It's an argument against the extremes on either end. Literalism and positivism. Atheists. You should understand that you're just not going to get that scientific evidence for God. Even if he existed, it's not going to be there. 
So demanding the scientific evidence of God is epistemologically flawed. Some may even call it a straw man. It doesn't help you or anybody else. I know we would like it to be there, I know it would solve all the issues, but it's not. And our wanting it to be there is not an excuse. Theists, you need to stop trying to argue for the existence of God with science. You're not going to succeed. You're going to get laughed at, and you're going to do science a disservice. But you can still have faith in your God, you can still believe in your God without the scientific evidence there. In fact, you shouldn't need it. In short, this is an argument against the God of the gaps, and the attempts to prove or disprove God with science. Science and God are separate epistemological issues, with answers not dependent on each other. Now let's keep them that way, shall we?